Um, I want to I show you something. I'm going to deviate from the slideshow. you got the three steps of biblical interpretation, right? Observation, interpretation. I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. This could be fun. Now, without going into this, let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever heard of the idea that the Holy Spirit must draw you to be saved? You've heard that before. And Brother Butler's heard it before. Anybody else heard that? Pretty common. Huh? Is that like saying, you know, you can hear the same message 20 times, but until the Holy Spirit knocks on your heart, you're not going to understand it? That's how some people apply it. Let me show you the proof text for that. And I don't, I don't want to ask who believes that or not, but... Jesus says, No man can come to me... Except the Father would send me, draw him, and I will rise him up the last, raise him up the last day. Y'all see that? And then how they apply that is today, if you want to get saved, if you want to trust Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit has to draw you, has to convict you and draw you and, and all that, and then then you can get saved. How many of you have heard that before? Okay, probably most of us have probably heard that before. Now let's let's apply observation. Let's ask some observation questions. Number one, who's doing the drawing there? The Father. The Father. Is that a simple question? Let me ask you a second question. How many read the book of John? I guess that's a sub question. Does Jesus Christ, who's it's red letters, does Jesus Christ know the difference between the Holy Ghost and the Father? Yes. yes. I would say yes. He, talk, he spends three chapters talking about the Holy Spirit. Just based on those two questions, can I use this verse to say that the Holy Spirit has to draw you to get saved? Is that what that says? You see how simple that is? I just asked you two questions. It's very simple. Now, if the Holy Spirit did draw you, I think, the whole, I think Jesus would know to say that. So, when, when does uh, this verse pertain to? The last day. <laughs> All right, I'll say that. How'd you figure that out? Let me scroll up a little bit. What's this talking about? When? Oh, when's that talking about? Last day. See that? Uh, let me see if there's any more. Where is it talking about? Down from heaven. Talking about heaven. So where is it talking about going? You think? To earth. He's going to earth. He came down from heaven. It's the second time we've seen that. This is the Father's will. By the way, and him that cometh to me, I want to know why he's cast out. Does it sound like it would be drawn there? He that believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up. Rise him up when? Last day. Last day. I am the bread which came down from where? And I came down from where? No man can come to me. Where is Jesus now? Heaven. Heaven. How are you going to come to him? you got to go to heaven. Right? When do you go to heaven? Is this talking about the Holy Spirit drawing somebody to receive Christ during the church age? You see, you see what I'm saying that's the proof text. That's the proof text that the Holy Spirit draws people to salvation during the church age. And if you just read it, ask yourself, when is this talking about? Who's talking? Where are they talking about? Where are we going? Draw me to what? If he's going to draw, draw me to do something, to go somewhere, is that a legitimate question? So far to me, it looks like it's talking about being drawn to where Jesus Christ is, which he's in heaven, sitting at the right hand of the throne of God, the last day being drawn by the Father. That's what it looks like to me. 
He that had learned of the Father cometh unto me, and he that had seen the Father, said he which is of God, seen the Father, very Okay, now let me show you another one. Same thought. Y'all see verse 44 there? No man can come to me. He said the Father would send me draw him. Let me show you another one. Same book. Same book. Look at verse 32 on the right hand side of your screen. See that? How many people get drawn? All men. Now who draws them? Jesus Christ. I got two verses on people being drawn to Christ, and neither one of them are the Holy Spirit. Isn't that odd? Yet the doctrine that's out there is that the Holy Spirit does the drawing, and that's the only one that doesn't. <laughs> people are funny. People are people are strange. The things that they come up with. So Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up. So this, no man can come to me except the Father would send me to draw him, and I will raise him up to the last day. But verse 32, after the crucifixion and resurrection, and if I be lifted up from the earth, and that's a reference to John 3, 14, if I be lifted up like the serpent of the wilderness on the cross, I will draw all men unto me. This is the will of God, that have all men come to knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, 5. So they try to tell you, verse, based on verse 44, John 6, 44, that some people are predestined to go to heaven, some people are predestined to go to hell, and God draws those who are predestined to go to heaven, and those who are predestined to go to hell, He doesn't draw them. Well, if that's the case, if that's the correct interpretation, then Jesus is going against the will of the Father because He's drawing all men to Himself. So you see the mess you get into. You can get, you can get yourself into a real mess that way. Not long ago, I was in a discussion with a Presbyterian chaplain here on Fort Hood, and we were discussing John 6.44, and I was pointing out the observations like we just discussed in the earlier portion of this video. And uh, he kind of got a little nervous under the collar, and he, first of all, started trying to hit me up for inconsistencies with his philosophy or his systematic theology, such as uh, who retains the initiative, is man now sovereign, and uh, the idea that First Timothy 2.4, where it's God's will for all men to be saved and come down out of the truth, that that idea makes God not sovereign somehow, because Calvinists never understand the three different aspects of the will of God, the passive, permissive, and the perfect. And so then it suddenly became my problem. He said, well, if John 6.44 doesn't teach that the Holy Ghost draws people to get saved, then what verse will you use to teach that? And the logic, just the logic of this just appalls me. That anybody who calls himself a Christian would place their topics and their systematic theology and their philosophy of how salvation works above and beyond Scripture. Like I have this pet topic and I, I must find a Scripture to teach it. Well, if Scripture doesn't teach anything, if you, if you teach all the Scripture and you never come across one that teaches that, then don't teach that. That's, that's where our stance is. And so uh, I'm just kind of uh, taken back that people don't realize that they're, they're putting their beliefs and their presuppositions above clear and plain Scripture. And we have to make sure that we always keep Scripture elevated Scripture is the authority. You just interpret the passage in the context in which it appears and go through all the passages and you'll always be fine. But when we have these pet doctrines and these pet systematic theologies that we're constantly trying to bolster up, you can find a scripture to support anything if you're willing to take it out of the context. But you'll find that some of those pet doctrines might not be so supportable if you just stick with the scripture, interpreting it correctly, in the context in which it appears. And that's what we always try to do. We never try to stick with topics or certain doctrines or anything. We always let the scripture define what it says and what it means where it says what it means. Instead of us bringing our definitions to the scripture, we'll let the scripture determine what the definition should be. And that's how we should form our doctrine. So there is no missing doctrine. There's no doctrine that the Bible, there's no true doctrine the Bible doesn't teach. And if you have a doctrine that you can't find scripture for, clear and plain scripture, correctly interpreted, it's probably a good idea. You probably shouldn't teach it anymore. Probably shouldn't believe it either.